Hi, this is Darren Lyle. I thought we'd start working on the belt today. Now this is an interesting one because I think that this main design piece on the front and even the little tiny flaps on each of the packs, I think those could be normal maps, uh, texture maps. Instead of trying to get these designs with a whole lot of polygons, I thought I'd wait and try and get these with a texture map. However, we're still going to need to build out the packs and the buckle here. So let's work on that. So I think the first thing I'll do is just click here and move the cursor right to there. Um, I'll then come over to the properties panel and I can move the cursor. Here it is. I can zero the cursor out in the X. So it's right in the center there. And then I'll go ahead and create a cylinder and I'll rotate it around the X so RX90 and I'll scale that down a bit something like that maybe scale it in the X so it's a little bit more oval shaped like that Now I don't need the front and back faces so I'll just select those two and delete those with the X key and I could probably scale in in the Y here and I'll also insert an edge loop around the edge here and then go back to the front view and scale this out just a bit so it bends out I think it kind of bends out I'll move that back something like that now I can take this edge here and extrude it in just a smidge Extrude again and pull that straight back like this and maybe scale out just a hair like that. Okay, so we've got that initial piece there. Now let's go back and let's create a UV sphere. Rotate it around the X 90 degrees. Scale it down and maybe scale it in the X just a bit so it kind of fits in there. Now that's a little bit too much of a curve there so maybe I'll scale in the Y something like this. Yeah that looks okay. And then I'll hit the 3 key and wireframe with the Z key. Tab into edit mode and go to face mode and I'll just select this area and delete this. I don't need all these. So we've got that kind of piece now. Let's um, add a subdivision surface modifier to it just to see how it's going to look. All right. And I'll come over here and smooth it. Same with this. And there we go. Now you can see some of that polling, so I'll want to go through and delete every other edge here. And I'll hit X and dissolve edges. All right, let's add an X or an, an edge right around here. There we go. All right, maybe I'll scale that up just a bit. All right, that's not looking too bad. Let's go ahead and put that in place and see how it works. I'll select them both and press Control J. I'm going to move it out to the front of the character and let's put it in place. Alright, now for those little packs around the belt. I think for this what I'm going to do is just select some faces and duplicate them off of the belt again to create those packs. So I'm going to turn off the subdivision surface modifier for now and let's come in here and Maybe I'll select these faces here. And I, I don't think I need these or even these back here, maybe. And then I'll duplicate them with Shift D. And there we go. So now I'll split these out with the P key and choose Selection. And now they're their own object. And I think I'll move this uh, to another layer. I'll just press M and go to the layer here. And now let's take a look at this. 
So for these, what I think I'll do is split them out individually. So if I insert an edge loop, say here, and bring this into here, and then delete this face, then I've got kind of a, a pack there that's going to, or at least the geometry that could begin that pack there. So maybe I could take this edge and use Control E and Edge Slide and move this over until it's kind of the size of one of those packs. And select that and split this out. So there's two packs. Let's take this edge and use Edge Split, excuse me, Edge Slide, and move that there. Place another one here, and another one, say, here. There's another one. There we go. So now we've got those four pieces, uh, excuse me, five pieces that are going to be the packs. We could now select all of those, change our pivot point to individual origins, hit extrude, and pull them all out. All right. So now we could probably come back here and just select these faces and delete these. We aren't going to need these since they're going to be right up against the belt. There we go. And now we're going to want to go through and insert edge loops to hold these because once we turn on the subdivision surface modifier again, they're going to collapse into these little blobs, so we're going to want to insert some edge loops here, like so. There we go. So I'll go through and do that for the rest of these. All right, so now that those edges have been inserted, let's take it back. Let's go back to the main layer, and let's select those and now I think we could scale those in just a little bit so they intersect a little bit better with the belt. So let's move the cursor to the center of the grid. Let's change the pivot point of those down to the 3D cursor. I'll just hit the period key. And then we can scale in by pressing S and then Shift Z. And now we're just scaling in the Y and the X. So I'll bring those in just a hair. All right, so we've got the basic geometry of the packs on the belt and on the buckle. I think, as I said, I'll work on creating normal maps, uh, texture maps, for the design on the buckle and the little flaps on the packs. That may not work, but I don't want to go ahead and add all that geometry to it until I test that out. So we'll work on that in the texturing stage. But in the next video, I think let's work on the cowl or the mask and those big flared out shoulder things that he's got on him. So we'll work on that next. I'll see you then. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, then join me for my Blender Scene Creation course. In it, we'll create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb. As we go, you'll be introduced to Blender's modeling tool set as we build the mech character and the environment. We'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode. And as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics, like cutting one 3D object with another using booleans. We'll talk about object origins and parenting, creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, and we'll add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping, what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles render engine as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program, GIMP, to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the Mac. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move, so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes 
and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting, as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. Bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation. Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.